And welcome to DailyItem.com. Matt Catrillo here with you. And joining me here is our new leader here at The Daily Item. He is our news editor, Dennis Lyons. He's new to the Central Susquehanna Valley and new here to The Daily Item and The Danville News as our new news editor. So, Dennis, welcome aboard here to The Daily Item and to the Central Susquehanna Valley. Thanks for a couple of minutes. Thanks, Matt. It's great to be here. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting to know the communities and meeting people around here. And I thought this might be a, a good way to uh, get that process going. Uh, already started writing a weekly column every uh, Sunday. Uh, I hope some people who are watching this may have caught that. But uh, we're going to uh, physically go out and meet as many people as we can in the, in the coming weeks. Now, to start things off, tell us a little bit about your background and where you're from, and a little bit about your family. I as well. was born and raised in Brooklyn and Queens, New York. And um, I, uh, I have four grown kids. My wife, Mary, and I are actually about to uh, move to Lewisburg. Uh, I've been in uh, this business for a very long time. I've, uh, uh, right out of college, I started working as a sports reporter, actually, uh, at a paper uh, in Connecticut. And uh, I've worked at uh, Daily Papers as a sports reporter, and then came uh, around uh, 1992, I kind of moved to news. And I um, worked in Indiana as a managing editor, and then ran three other community newspapers, all for the Gannett Company, which uh, owns a lot of papers, much like uh, CNHI does, uh, and uh, then the last eight years I was at USA Today as a uh, as a national editor there. So it, it's it's been kind of a um, see the world on the newspaper plan type of a thing, but uh, I've enjoyed it and I'm getting to know the people in the various communities we've worked at. Of course, you bring quite the resume, Dennis. So just talk about some of the highlights that you've experienced throughout the years. I'm, I'm sure you have plenty from USA Today. What's going well, on? Well, you know, U USA Today, of course, is it, it was kind of a ni nice opportunity after spending about 15 years running community papers such as this one, it was kind of nice to be able to perform on the national stage for some time. Uh, but even then, I was very involved with local uh, journalism because part of my job, a big part of my job, was taking the content from other papers across the Gannett company and making them work for the USA Today audience. So obviously, you know, I was at USA Today when the Boston Marathon bombing happened uh, and, and any number of other big stories, um, uh, the, the most, uh, Memorable story, of course, has to have been the September 11th terrorist attacks when I was at the Daily Record in Parsippany, New Jersey. And uh, that was the only uh, time I've ever been associated with putting out an extra print edition. Um, and uh, we did quite a great job because we were, pr uh, the proximity of that paper to New York City was, was uh, pretty close. And so there were a lot of people who commuted to Manhattan, had loved ones who perished, what have you. So it, uh, that was uh, something I'll never forget, and uh, well, for well, God, we spent the next three, four weeks really focusing on pretty much nothing else. But um, you know, those are some of the big ones. Uh, had some uh, fun things too. I was a sports editor when my uh, beloved New York Mets beat the Boston Red Sox in the World Series That's back in 1986. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, I, I actually one of the few times I ever got to uh, hold the presses, stop the presses, was uh, when uh, Game Six, uh, where. Uh, uh, the uh, immortal Bill Buckner ground ball th between the legs. <laughs> uh, that game was tied in the 10th inning, uh, and um, we were past deadline, and I was in charge that night. And I said, no, nah, we're not going without this game. So fortunately, it ended uh, uh, an inning later, but uh, that was fun. And uh, some, from a journalistic perspective, of course, you've seen many different perspectives over the years of all the different areas that you've covered. And what is it about the Central Susquehanna Valley and the Daily Item and Danville News that attracted you here? Well, first of all, I, I like community journalism. I like one of the downsides, if there was any, of working at USA Today was that the stories we were doing weren't directly impacting the community where I was working. This and all the other community newspapers I've worked at is the case. And we're talking to people who live here, who work here, who have a vested interest in the uh, future of this area. And I think that makes it a, a big attraction to, to be doing journalism that kind of makes a difference. Obviously, things have changed. Uh, digital is uh, way more important than it was earlier in my career. And we're trying like heck to, uh, uh, to uh, increase our, uh, our um, story count and, and our ability to get news as fast as we can up on our various uh, uh, audio, um, sorry, video platforms with uh, the desktop, with the phones, with the tablets, whatever. We want you to be able to get your news as quickly as possible and as accurately. I mean, fast is good, accurate is better. So we, we want to make sure that when we put something online, you can take it to the bank that it's uh, the real deal. And that may not be the complete story. If there's been an accident, we're going to alert everybody that there's been an accident. But we may not have the name of the victim. We may not have what caused the accident. That will develop as we update the story throughout the day. So it's been a big change. But it's a good change in a way because I think, to some degree, um, 
newspapers have taken breaking news back. There was a while where breaking news was more of a TV radio thing. And then with the dawn of the web and all of us having websites and uh, people having the news uh, availability in the palm of their hand, we were able to get back into the, we're going to break a story, and I don't care if we break a story on our uh, digital platforms or on our, in our print. And honestly, 99 out of 100, you're going to break it first on digital because you're going to get it up as absolutely fast as you can. Yeah, it's really amazing how much the industry has grown, especially in print, bringing video and audio aspect, aspects to it. So be, be sure to be looking out for all those new aspects on dailyadam.com. And next, what are your, some primary goals that you have when it comes to working at the paper here each day, Dennis? Well, we want to make sure we're telling good stories, important stories that matter to the people who uh, live and work here. Uh, we want to have a nice combination of what happened yesterday and some uh, in-depth looks beyond what happened yesterday, what caused it. Uh, we want to have as a complete a package as we can. One of the things we're going to try to do is have a more consistent uh, full news report uh, that involves the state as well as the uh, communities here. Um, and we want to uh, continually uh, let people know that they can trust us to be the best source for local news around here. Uh, and that's uh, something that I think a lot of people already feel, but we want to just uh, grow that uh, and um, have a sense of this is more about what caused the, the, the whys and the, is just as much as important as what. You know, there's the old who, what, when, where, how. Why is a big important thing too. Uh, you know, why is there a budget delay right now uh, five plus months, you know, uh, and what have you. Uh, so there's uh, a sense that this paper does a great job. Of key, has, it's really got uh, a lot of great sources. People know that we know what happened yesterday, but I want us to also be able to explain uh, more and more of the why of what's happening. Now, as you settle into your new home here, I mentioned you're going to be moving into Lewisburg with your family. Um, what have been some of your initial uh, impressions about the area so far? I've, I've really enjoyed some of the things I've gotten to do so far. Uh, you have two beautiful campuses here with Bucknell and Susquehanna. Uh, if it ever stops raining, it's rained a lot since I've been here, it seems. <laughs> but I don't know if that's an omen or not, but <laughs> I hope not. We, uh, I love taking a walk along the Susquehanna River uh, down, the, down the block here on Front Street. Um, you know, I've uh, gotten to some neat restaurants and, and uh, uh, went to a florist right down here on, on uh, Market Street in Sunbury the other day to get my wife a centerpiece for our Thanksgiving table. And it was so cool to just go into a, uh, a, you know, a really good local people who care about what they did uh, business right, right there on Market Street. And that, that's fun. So, um, you know, there's, I've met some people I'll hope to meet a whole lot more. Uh, but I, I, there's a lot of cool stuff around here, I, you know, and it's different. But I've lived, I, I worked four years in Lansdale, Pennsylvania. It's not my first uh, Keystone State uh, uh, job. So I kind of uh, uh, have fond memories of those days in Pennsylvania, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting to know the uh, community and the people here much better. You certainly won't go hungry, too. I'm sure you noticed the amount of Weiss markets that are in the, the area as well. <laughs> yeah. of course, well the and when we lived in Lansdale, we actually lived in a little town <laughs> called Upper Gwynedd, which was right adjacent to Lansdale. Uh, but uh, that was where uh, my wife and I shopped all the time uh, when we were uh, when we were living there. In fact, uh, there was w there was one briefly at our home in New Jersey, uh, but um, unfortunately, it didn't last very long. But uh, no, we're uh, we're uh, glad to see that. Uh, you know, I'm glad to see some of the new things that are coming. I'm up in Lewisburg, where I'm about to live. I see they're opening a, a Chipotle and. Uh, I, I got to admit, Buffalo have, Wild Wings too is on the strip now. Too. I have I have a weakness for Jersey Mike subs, and they're going to uh, <laughs> uh, open one of those too. But I also walking up and down the Market Street in in um, Lewisburg so far, and uh, somewhat here in Sunbury as well. Just seeing the individual local businesses, and it's boy, it's got to be tough to be an independent local business uh, owner these days. And you know, we uh, will be writing more about that too. But it's. Um, it's kind of neat to see the non-chain things, the, the interesting little pub or the interesting little um, antique store or, or uh, whatever. So, uh, you know, yeah, fun to see the, the familiar, but it's also fun to see the unfamiliar and the, the new and the local. Now, of course, we've talked about this before. You've been in the Keystone State before, but now you're right in the smack dab in the middle between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. You mentioned you're from Brooklyn, hard in New York. What kind of climate change and, and culture change does that kind of bring to you living here now in the central Susquehanna Valley? Well, first of all, I don't root for any of the sports teams that people around here probably root for. <laughs> I, I'm a dyed-in-the-wool dyed Mets fan, Jets fan, Rangers fan, Knicks fan. 
Um, I went to Fordham, so I can't even really always root for Bucknell because they play in the same uh, football league. Uh, but I'll be rooting for Bucknell and virtually all the, uh, the other ones. There you go. And, su <laughs> and Susquehanna. Um, but, um, you know, it's different. But I've lived in smaller towns before. I lived in West Lafayette, Indiana. I lived in, in Upper Gwinnett, Pennsylvania. I lived in uh, Grand Island, New York. So I've lived in some small towns before. Yes, uh, a lot of my places of uh, residence have been within a, a short drive or, uh, you know, subway or metro ride to uh, big cities like New York and Washington. Um, but there's charms to both ends of things, and uh, I'm looking forward to discovering all the charms here. Now, my final question for you, Dennis, of course, we, we would do a little bit more sports talk with you here because, of course, you, you worked in the sports industry for a number of years, and, of course, I'm the sports guy here working for the, the, the Daily M sports side of things. Um, so you mentioned your professional teams that you root for, of course. They're all in the New York side of things, and you know what? Rangers are doing well. Mets are doing well. You got it pretty good right now. Um, but give me your thoughts on some of the local teams. We've had a lot of success the last couple of weeks. Lewisburg Boys Soccer won the state title for the first time in over 15 years. Uh, we have two football teams that are still in the state playoffs in Seals Grove and Southern Columbia. So just kind of talk about what you think about our local sports well, teams so I, far. I mean, it's a lot of fun watching uh, Lewisburg accomplish what it just did in soccer. Um, I happened to be out at dinner with uh, some new friends uh, the night after they won the state championship. And I'm at, I was at the uh, Lewisburg Hotel. And uh, all of a sudden, you see these uh, sirens going by uh, and uh, these fire trucks and ambulances and whatever. And um, so, you know, being a news guy, first thing I, I just, when I go out to any place is, oh, my God, what's going on? And I've got um, the iPhone out, and I'm all ready to figure out I gotta, may have to interrupt dinner and report a story until I found out it, it was the uh, celebration going on for in the community. And I thought that was so cool that the uh, Lewisburg community had gotten so behind uh, and in fact, I think we ran a story uh, on the front page the day before how the community had gotten behind the team, and that's great. And obviously, seeing uh, our teams in, uh, advance now in the uh, in the state uh, football playoffs has been a, a lot of fun to watch as well. And you know, we do I think a great job, you guys, uh, with uh, uh, using all the tools we have available oh, with yeah. with video and and tweeting and uh, what have you. So uh, it's been fun watching that. And uh, you know, uh, I, good local sports teams can uh, really bring a community together. Um, I had, uh, my, my son Dan was um, a uh, all-county baseball player at Mount Olive High School in New Jersey, and uh, he also went on to play and become the starting catcher at George Mason University in Virginia. So I, I've had personal reasons to be deeply involved in uh, scholastic sports, plus I was a scholastic sports editor for quite some time. Uh, you know, again, like everything else, I'm just getting my feet wet, but uh, local sports really is a big part of the community, and I, you know, one of the things I've been really impressed by so far is what uh, the kind of coverage that the Daily Item does do for uh, local sports teams. And uh, we have a new publisher here, and uh, he was at uh, a, a local restaurant, and like one of his first days, and somebody came up to him and told him what a great job we had done covering that state championship. So that was kind of nice to hear. It was, yeah. And I was down there in Hershey myself covering for for us here at the Daily Item and Danville News, and it was it was certainly a lot of fun to be a part of. And when I got here, I've only been here for a couple months myself too, Dennis, and the local sports scene here, everybody's, the way everybody rallies around, not just Lewisburg, but Sunbury, Seals Grove, it's Chickalemi and Seals Grove, it's, it's really awesome, and all the other schools around the area, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun, it's a great area, and we're certainly uh, happy and lucky to have you here as our new news editor, that's Dennis Lyons, he's our new news editor here for the Daily Item and the Danville News, we thank you so much for a couple minutes, and again, welcome, and we wish you the best of luck here. Ben Gray, we'll do it again. Sounds great, and I'm Matt Catrillo, and thanks for joining us here on DailyItem.com.